On today's show, we have Neil Twa. Since 2012, Neil Twa has been launching, operating, and growing private label businesses on Amazon FBA. He's a co-founder of Voltage Digital Marketing, an Amazon growth consultancy, and co-founder of a software called Sixleaf that helps sellers launch brands. And since 2016, he and his partners have helped thousands of students launch and grow their own private label brands, many of whom have gone on to create amazing six, seven, and even eight-figure businesses. Together, they sold over $100 million in physical products across the Amazon channel. Today, he's focused on launching, operating, and accessing e-commerce brands with a continued focus on Amazon FBA and multi-channel marketing. Neil, welcome to the show. Hey, great to be here, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. We've had some really great conversations over the past month, Neil. Um, I've really enjoyed getting to know more about you, your business, and I'm super excited to share your story and what you do with our audience yeah. before we really get into the nitty gritty kind of share with us a little bit more about your background i mean you have an amazing team you're working with now so maybe you can kind of catch us up to where you are today um well once upon a time uh, there <laughs> uh, i like long walks on the beach uh let's get all that out of the way I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll try not to say anything that my mother cares about let's get down to the stuff that's most interesting like uh, i'm a college dropout people like to that i think at times they think it's funny um i have a school of hard knocks education yeah i wanted to learn about e-commerce in college uh i went to uh, college on a full ride music scholarship and a work study and so i thought i was going to be a musician loved miles davis jazz went on classical uh and got to go do that and thought I was going to, you know, do that for my life. Uh, by the time I got to the third year of that, I realized I was going to be living in a van down by the river. And I'm like, nah, this isn't going to fly. So I, I got into business management, the internet kicked off. I'm like, man, I want to learn how to make money. The internet's going to be something else. You know, we were doing green inbox on the computer screens at that point. I'm sort of dating myself, but I'm not really that old. And so I got to, got to look at that. So. Yeah. <laughs> and so I went for the computer science and I was like, they're going to teach you Fortran and COBOL and mainframe programming. And I'm like, oh, dude, no way. I am, I'm not living on the green paper thing. I'm not doing that. Right. So uh, a guy comes in, he's an adjunct professor and he is, you know, he's, he's teaching and he's a consultant. And I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm starting to learn this HTML thing and active server pages, ASP. And I'm like, wow, what is that? And he's like, well, it's dynamic driven. It's going to be on the internet and all this stuff. And I'm like, teach me how to do that. So we can't do that here at college. So I'm like, I'm out of here. Uh, so I went and got a, a little gig making like 20 bucks an hour as a consultant in uh, near Kansas City. I was doing, I had learned in the computer science lab how to set up and network these computers when they first came in. I taught myself, learned how to do it. Nobody knew how to do it at that point, right? Um, hmm. So I gotten good enough that I got this little job and I was working inside of banks, basically going around and helping them network their computers and their printers and ditches and the little, all that other crap we used to have to do once upon a time. So I uh, got pretty good at that. I started teaching myself HTML, active server, dynamic pages, started teaching myself program for the web, uh, did get picked up as a consultant uh, in Sprint Local, where I helped them build like a knowledge management platform and realized I had, you know, more of an aptitude for the business and the understanding of the technology, but the application of its business and it's more of the uh, uh, creativity of my background was flowing into business and the jazz I love was making this creation because nobody had done this before. And so I had this opportunity to create something and it, and it uh, was pretty successful. And because of that, I went and applied for this little company called PCS. Sprint had just opened its mobile mm -hmm. division in Kansas City and I got hired like on the spot. I was like the 5,000th employee because they were just sucking employees from everywhere and trying to hire people as fast as they could. And I'm like, great, cool, let's do that. So I went into there, got a job. We were running the whole you know, 50,000 web page version of Sprint's uh, mobile division, the internal customer support thing. And it got like crazy. So they decided let's build this knowledge management platform. I'm like, what is that? I have no idea like what knowledge management. So I learned about tacit and implicit and learning and knowledge and latent semantic search engines and natural NLP language and all this stuff that had to go as a part of that. And quickly, very immersed into all of the business of uh, and the sciences behind all that. And uh, got really good at it. I launched that project, got to be a part of the success of that, the first knowledge management that helped support uh, Sprint as it grew to 80,000 employees by the time I left uh, and 25,000 wow. customer service reps. So it became a, me a mega organization. And they needed more help and they needed to expand and stuff. So they hired IBM to come in and IBM it was a cross project team, long story short. Uh, the project was going really great. One of the partners and I became friends. The cue here is uh, networking is net worth. <laughs> at the end of I the love day. that. That's, and, yeah, that's you know, gold so right I there. Just, yeah, networking with these guys and getting to know and going to lunch and finding out what they're about and making friends and learning. And literally at the end of the day, I discovered one critical component that most people kind of miss all of this stuff. And that is 
Uh, it's uh, who you know that gets you there and it's what you know that keeps you there. So if I couldn't have figured that out, learned it or adapted to it, I would have been kicked out and fired. I would have been removed, right? But I actually found that I could I could do it. And so IBM said, hey, come, come, come work for us. I'm like, great. You know, the partner answered me. I went to Armand, kind of handshake, and suddenly I'm in IBM. Again, no degree. So I feel like the dumbest guy in the room, which is what everybody wants to do. And everybody says, I don't be the dumbest guy in the room. Well, I literally was the dumbest guy in the room. I went to the double docs, <laughs> the MITs, the super guys, the Yale and the Harvard graduates and all these people. I'm sitting in like the uh, boardrooms of some of the large, you know, communications companies. At that point, I'd been in Verizon. I'd been in uh, CenturyLink. I'd gone into the Thompson family companies. I'd been in Wall Street and sitting on the boardroom. I was, you know, we... And so we got to the, all of that and realized there was nowhere else to go, but I'd always been playing a little side hustle game. I had a little game server company running on the internet. We had uh, thousands of customers who were basically doing uh, VoIP communications so they could yeah. multiplayer their games. So I'm dating myself again, because you couldn't do the game and play and talk to each other unless you had cell phones. So we set up these little uh, audio codecs on servers and people could connect in groups of 10, 20, 50. And we had little package and they paid per package. And then they would talk and network and do their multiplayer gaming, right? long before games actually incorporated it into the actual game, which we all take for granted now. So anyways, that for a while. Um, but it always gave me that entrepreneurial spirit. I always knew I was going to eventually kick out on my own. IBM says, hey, we're going to Argentina. Do you want to come? And I'm like, no, I don't want to go to Argentina. Uh, so they said, here's your early retirement. So in 2007, I left. Um, I started my own management consulting company, made IBM a client, got into the public sector as well, and some security clearances, got to go work at places like Boeing, uh, and do other things in the drone programs. And we got to work more in the knowledge management side and Cummins manufacturing and got this really cool stuff when I was my own consultant. So they paid me a really handsome fee to do that way more than they were paying me when I was an employee. <laughs> Funny how that works, isn't it? Yeah. Funny how that works. So there you go, yeah. inventing, reinventing myself. I kept moving forward, right? And just kept filling holes where I could fill holes, literally. And always knew again that I had to keep doing my own thing. And so I just kept expanding and adapting, got into... Um, wire line communications and at a startup company in Oklahoma in the oil and gas fields were basically uh, um, got patents on uh, digital wireline communications, um, basically turning copper lines in the home or business into communications that could accept like gigabit transfers. Yeah. I've heard about that. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. one plugs for Sony where you basically plug a television in and all your internet data and everything or wherever you plug it in. Uh, it was really cool. And demand grid since it so if you had a, you know, a, a brownout happening in, in California, all the homes and businesses in a certain area would be demand elastic. So they would literally come down. Things would shut off automatically. Business shut off. It would avoid, you know, brownouts and blackouts. Super cool technology. No one's ever going to hear of it because um, really? that bombed and failed. Uh, and then, yeah, bombed and failed. I put too much money. I found out my, uh, my partners were cooking the books. Uh, one day I discovered, mm -hmm. you know, why are we having so much trouble? Where's the money going, et cetera? And then I discovered where it went. Uh, so then led into the narrow reinvention of myself as I started to learn how to do, you know, mobile paid ads and mobile traffic ads. Um, I got to be pretty successful at that, uh, which kind of saved my bacon a bit because I had to go bankrupt um, in that uh, business, I had to indemnify myself, cancel out the business, clear out everything and get in, absolved of all of that because of the investor money to, to it. Um, so I got out of all that trouble because I wasn't involved in it, but what a mess. So I had to reinvent myself and start over again. And I did in affiliate marketing, um, got into lead generation and traffic generation and mobile. And we were uploading mobile spreadsheets of products into to servers and just watching it go across the networks and seeing what came back. And I had struck a little bit of gold on a mobile dating app out of South Africa. Never believed this South Africans would ever have so much fun mm -hmm. dating, uh, but apparently they were hot and dating in the uh, you know mid 2000s. <laughs> So, uh, hey, we, yeah. what, what do they say? What, what my coach says, if you can sell, uh, if, if you can sell, you know, sex health or how to get rich, you're going to make money. <laughs> sure. Well, dating is kind of a combination of all those, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, that was kind of the great hybrid market. Um, but I got into it well enough to, to help some companies be very successful, learn about series A funding and how to, how to fund companies and stuff. And so we had done that and, and did that some more through those comps and helped them do that. Uh, and realizing that, you know, while I was generating their traffic and leads, I should be generating my own product leads. And it kind of dawned on me in around 2000, and I need to be running my own products. Like I need to switch gears here and stop running other people's products or apps. And I need to start running all this traffic to my own. And thus began the brand era, really, of my e-com evolution. <laughs>